What else resolved. is what else is skyrocketing? Anything else launching? Um I don't want to talk. Launching? No, there's no rockets anymore. Rockets are done. <laughs> Speaking of rockets, um so there was a rocket launch uh, on Tuesday this week and it was another Starlink launch surprise surprise, right? We're all shocked by that but there were two cool things about this one in particular uh first off it was the first time that a booster has flown for the sixth time so it was its fifth reuse so it's now the life leader and we got a little bit of cool insight from elon but the other thing before we talk about that i do want to share this with you they also did this um give me one second they also did one of these get ready I'm probably going to get copyright strike if I let more of that play. Uh, <laughs> but look at this video here. Wait, is this the, real? This is real footage. Does that not look like the most fake? <laughs> it, what we're seeing is the, you got to go on Elon's Twitter and look at this. It is them catching the fairing with the boat. Uh, and it looks Included so fake. A, yeah. It's too perfect. Like it's. It must be high noon, basically, because or pretty close to high noon, because the, there's almost no shadows and everything. And they finally just ab- that is gentle. Isn't that amazing? They absolutely nail it. Wow. Yeah, that video is super cool. The first shot looks hilarious. It just <laughs> that does not look real. Oh, well, probably because a lot of it is, you know, it's reflecting the lights reflecting off the water, too. So it's under lighting and like filling all the backlighting. So there's like no shadows in this shot. Almost. It just looks it looks perfect. It's hilarious. Um, So we the got a CGI little bit of team is really good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the world is fake. Maybe what? the whole world is fake. Uh, but this is interesting. So Elon just kind of shared this. He said, fairing shoot control and ship control are closing the loop locally, both operating on SpaceX autopilot. So we've kind of always wondered how they're doing this, but basically each of them are uh, are kind of aiming at a target. And apparently they're both talking to each other to try to figure mm. out how to close on each other and, and how to make it happen. And they're doing it autonomously. And... I, it seems like, I mean, there's still not, you know, there's so many external conditions. Like, for instance, they only caught one half this time. They couldn't catch the other half because mm. wind took it, basically. You know, wind, those ground winds, a big burst can just send it right off course, you know, um, and make it so they can't catch it like this. But it seems like they're getting better at this and, you know, able to get more hang time because that looks like it's coming down super slow, you know, yeah. but then again, the sea states were calm. I think it all just for them now is is dependent on, you know, how calm the, the weather is. Whether or not they can catch these fairings. That's but wild. It really wow. is wild. Now, did well, the other the, one, the, I was going to say, did, did the other one, th- are they going to fish it out of the water or? Yep. They already okay. did or have or will or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So that's totally normal now. And yeah, of course, you know, they, they landed on the, the drone ship uh, for the sixth time now with this and they, booster. And they kept the video signal the whole time. That was gonna, and they kept that's the what video I was signal. Say a second ago. Yep. Yep. People are are uh, still kind of getting used to that because that's something we're not quite you know used to. But um, from what I understand is that the trick really has not it doesn't people are like, oh, maybe they're using Starlink now. The real problem with the video signal and why we're seeing improvements is that if you're shooting up and you're, you know, you're pointing your satellite dish up to try to get, you know, your link up into the satellites and the satellites can take it back down to the ground, right? Uh, If you're going up, you're going to be shooting your radio signal or your video feed through a plasma field, basically, right? You're going to be Mm -hmm. shooting it right into something that's shaking with tons of plasma and lots of force just going nuts. Um, But... Uh, the, the other part is, or what, what we're kind of hearing that they've been, been doing more lately is basically bouncing the signal off to the report, the support ship. And because it's on the horizon, they actually do have to like physically bounce the signal off the water. Like they, they found a cool Mm. way to, to really be able to reliably do that, um, and point it more locally. And then the, then that support ship can then send it off. So it's kind of like people being like, why don't they just put it on a buoy? You know, like that was always the solution was a buoy or something. It's like, yeah, because buoys don't rock around and wave and gimbal. Yeah. Come on, just you know. <laughs> I mean, it's true. There's satellite gimbals. There. Yeah. Well, there are satellite gimbals for sure. 
for sure. But yeah, I mean, it's just cool that we're that this is becoming. It's really proving out the whole, you know, reuse thing. And and Elon even talked about that a little bit, um, because it, that kind of came up about you know how many times you have to reuse this. That's always the question because we've had people like, um, uh, Tori Bruno, you know, from ULA has said things like, oh, you know, it doesn't make that much sense to do it. That you know, reuse just doesn't make sense financially or whatever. Uh, he mm-hmm. estimated that it takes at least <laughs> ten times to be able to do it before it pays off. Was his company's estimates. Um, but this is what Elon said. So he said payload reduction due to reusability of booster and fairing is about 40% or less than 40%. So, you know, say you could take, you know, well, let's just make this easy. Say you could take 10,000 kilograms or something. And if you had to reuse it, you can now take, you know, what, 6,000 or a little more than 6,000 basically. So you reduce it by 40% for Falcon 9 and, and, uh, for, to be able to recover and refurbish it and refurbishment costs is, less than 10% the cost of the booster. So he so Elon's saying you're roughly even with about two flights. So if you use it twice, uh, but you're definitely ahead with three. So if they reuse a booster three times, they're ahead. Now, I don't know if he's really factoring in the R&D that goes into, you know, all the the actual research and development and the engineering for the all the extra hardware for these reuse into those considerations, because that's certainly not free. Well, you know, why, that has to be millions. Why does the payload drop? I don't understand. Why is it not for, the same? For SpaceX, it's because they have to reserve some fuel margin in their first stage to be able to do the entry burn and the landing burn. And that's fuel that could have been spent carrying the, you know, a heavier satellite um, oh, 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 got it, up got to it. that speed. So, so okay, they have to, but per launch, the payload capacity is the same. No, per launch, the payload capacity it can is reduced by up to 40 percent every time every time there any reusable launch so if you expect that's why expended rockets can can perform higher they can do no, no, more no. work that's what yeah yeah I, I get that but what i'm saying like like let's say you launch once falcon 9 for mm-hmm. reusability yep what what can that carry Six thousand kilograms or something right i mean realistically like that's doing like eighteen thousand kilograms yeah okay i just was trying to make okay. math easy. then yeah. your next launch you can oh you can still do eighteen thousand again that's what i mean yes right it it, it yes. doesn't reduce per no no launch. good co- yeah no 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 that's that's a good thing to okay clarify. yeah because how i read elon's tweet that's how i interpreted that that's no it's it's just that in order to reuse it you take a performance hit got it yep. got it which makes yep. total sense that's obvious yes. yep so that's uh yeah that's that kind of some good numbers to see coming out of that. And, and just, and it's just really cool. Cause I mean, six flights is nothing to scoff at here. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like it was a big deal. Or just a couple years ago. It's like, Oh my gosh, they're going to try, you know, they're going to try it for a third time. And it was like a, <laughs> you know, like you're like, no way they're, they're really pushing it now. Aren't they? they and they now lost, we're seeing, they lost ahead. one of them, right? Go ahead, Joe. I was just going to say, wait till, wait till one of them gets to the 13th time. Oh Ooh. God. Oh God. Yeah, everyone will then be... They'll just skip it. Call it the 14th. <laughs> 14th, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 12 well, and, they, and, and to be clear, yeah, they have lost a couple of these Block 5 boosters that were intended to be reused. You know, we had one that had an engine go out on Ascent, and then because of that and some other reasons, it ended up losing an, another engine during reentry, and it was not able to land. So they lost mm-hmm. that booster. That was only... That was this year, I think. Um, one of the Starlink. They lost a couple to landing failures. They're really pushing those Starlink satellites a little bit harder, I think, and leaving lower margins for landing. And I think they lost like two in a row, if I remember right, like Starlink six, yeah. and, six and seven, I think. Yeah. Um, so they lost, they've lost some block fives. They also lost uh, B10.50 for CRS 20 or 19 or something a, a couple of years ago. That was the one where the grid fins got stuck. Mm-hmm. Right as it was like re-entering, and all of a sudden just started going crazy, and the, it they ended up repurposing some of those parts. Or that was in 2018, December in 2018. They repurposed some of those parts for Starhopper and stuff like that. Like that, it wasn't a total loss, but that booster obviously never flew again. Um, didn't get to live a, its life out. But these boosters are designed for 10 reuses. That's the design case for them, and mm-hmm. I think it's still kind of a constant evaluation on like how how are they holding up? Can we get 10? Can we get more than 10? You know, like I I don't quite know what the criteria are and what they're exactly looking at between each flight, but you can assume that they're doing healthy checks and have some kind of, you know, 
at this X point, we, you know, the stress is in the skin or something. At this point, we can no longer fly yeah. the booster or something. H- have they said what, what that might be? Like, I know um, from the, uh, the hydrogen car out here, the Mirai, uh, mm-hmm. if you look inside of the gas cap area, it says, like, you're not allowed to use that after 2028. And it's because the hydrogen itself eats away at like the welds mm. or something. It like basically uh, is going to be unstable. So right. you're going to have to like completely trash the car or or maybe potentially completely rebuild the hydrogen part of the car wow. huh. because hydrogen is such a gnarly material to try to like maintain. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about like a car, you know, you're not talking right. about some something at JPL or something that's like right. super high precision. You're talking about manufacturing right. line. So yeah. is it something like that where like, Methalox or no, it's not Methalox, like RP1 or whatever they use is going to eat away. Oxygen. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. would make the reusability um, diminish? I would guess that, yeah, I mean, just there's a lot of high pressures in a lot of these systems, you know, a lot of cryogenic right. and extreme pressure gradients where the- I was, I was thinking about the temperature, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the temperature gradient on the inside of the fuel tank is like minus 200 degrees Celsius and on ascent and, and re-entry- some of those skin temperatures can be hundreds of degrees or thousands of degrees Celsius. So yeah. you just have these huge temperature gradients. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I don't really know what like exactly I, you'd imagine that even like landing and everything, like some just of those the shocks stress and of stuff, it. Yeah. there'd be some stress. But then again, like those stresses are probably lower than, you know, don't forget this vehicle during ascent is accelerating it over three G's sometimes. Yeah. So it's already getting crunched in pretty hard. So landing is all still in that same. It would be different if it like landed and got pulled or landed sideways and had to experience stresses on a different axis. But it's the stresses mm-hmm. are still going right up the middle of the fuselage. So the the way it's still engineered is, is you know, it's accepting stress and, and loads through the same uh, yeah, in the yeah. same manner that they would normally during ascent. So just moving parts, though, I mean, stress yeah. on any kind of mechanical thing is going to fail eventually. Right. Right. Well, and there's, you know, they can replace engines. Uh, I, we still don't know exactly what they're doing between refurbishments, if they're taking off every engine or if they're locally inspecting them while they're still attached to the booster, but they can swap them out. No big deal. Um, so then it just, yeah, it leads to the question of like, what is the metric? What is the thing that you're looking for when it's time to retire a booster? Like, what is the life? What is the life ending thing for a booster? Is it is it the engines? Is right. it the the you know the octaweb is it the landing legs and where they attach or you know like what i'd be curious what their refurbishment or inspection process is between the the launches like you just said like what what exactly do they look at where are they most concerned about that could be wearing down over time you know right and you know what i think i i'll bet you they would hide that closer that those cards closer to their chest than anything starship related because I think that's still about where other companies are maybe trying to look into is something on that scale. And they're so far ahead with Starship that they're just like, yeah, good luck. You know, like, well, we've the already... Falcon 9 is their bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. If someone wants to try to copy what they're doing with Starship, they've got a lot more stuff to figure out first, you know? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member where you'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.